And so he made FontForge, which is um, you know, a, a font editor very similar to Fontographer. And it has open type support. It supports all the different font formats. It has Python scripting. It's very you know, full of features. But it was made by this guy as his retirement project. So it wasn't you know, made for you know, uh, type designers kind of as a, as a direct thing. It was really made for him to have fun programming it. And so this is available as you know, free Libra open source software. So all of you guys can download it today and use it indefinitely for free. And if you have any suggestions or problems, then you can report those on GitHub. Is anyone not familiar with GitHub? Okay. So um, yeah, I encourage you to, to look into GitHub. It's like a way of managing collaborative projects where a lot of web development and design is done now. Um, and, and also software, which is you know, where it comes from. And so if you go to the fontforge.github.io um, website, then you can see that there's a download area. And um, you know, I'm trying to organize funding to pay people to work on Fontforge to make it better. So uh, this, isn't, this is not quite set up yet, but eventually you'll be able to you know, buy a license. But if you click down here on the Mac link, then you can see there's some very simple instructions on how to install Fontforge. And there's like yeah, a few steps. And so you, you download the app here like this, and then you follow the instructions, you unzip it, you, know, you move it into your applications folder. Um, you might need to go security and uh, unlock it. And then you can install it. So if you do that, you go to your applications, go to forge, and then you run it. And then the first window that you get is the, uh, you know, the character view. It's like a palette of glyphs. And if you click on a glyph, then you get the character editing window. So if we want to draw an N, then we can type N. So, so you, you type N, so you select the N, and then you get this glyph drawing area. And so this is you know very much like Illustrator. Uh, you know you have these Bezier tools uh, toolbar on the left. You have a, a layers palette, and then you have this this glyph drawing area on this square. So you have a baseline here. So to draw a lowercase N, obviously we, we couldn't start drawing up here. That's like the ascender line. So we take it, the uh, Bezier pen tool, and then we would draw some contours in the kind of typical Illustrator kind of way. Where you, you know, click and drag to drag out a curve point, and you click once to put down the corner point. And so you can see when I clicked on the first point there, the outline went from um, red, it's like a red line. And when I click on that first point, it goes grey. And that shows you that this is a closed contour. So this is something you don't deal with in Illustrator, but it's very important in fonts. Because font technology really comes from the early 80s. It hasn't really been updated for 30 years. And so it's a bit stupid. So um, when you have... Um, your, uh, your letter form like this, it has to be closed. And then if you press the Grav key, then you get like a black preview. So when we were sketching, you know, we were sketching like the area and then we filled it in. And so with the computer, you draw the contour and then you hold down a key and fill it in to kind of get that sense of the black and the white shapes. So um, we can close this window and then we can go to the O. And for the O, we're just going to very quickly click on the circle tool down here in the toolbox. And it might look like a rectangle on, on your screen. So if you click it, you can see it toggles between the two. So when you click that, you can drag out a simple circle. And then you can preview that and you can see how that is. And if we drag out another circle on the inside and preview that, it's not punched out. You know, that it's just two black shelves. So. so the way that font systems know 
which are the black parts and which are the white parts is by the direction. And so if you look carefully, you can see there are these little blue arrows pointing to the direction. And um, they're going the same way. So if we go to the element menu and say correct direction, then we can see that now it's made the outer contour clockwise and the inner contour counterclockwise. And we could also double click on a point to select the whole contour. And I get element reverse direction or set it clockwise or counterclockwise. And so when we do this, when we have the two directions going opposite ways, then it knows which one's the outer and which one's the inner, and which one should be black and which one should be white. So this is very important, this idea that you have closed contours and that they have directions. It's something you don't have to deal with in Illustrator, but you just have to deal with it in a type of So that's the, the, the first two windows of a font editor. So the third window, which is something you don't have in Illustrator or similar programs, is you have a metrics window. So you can go to the metrics menu, new metrics window, and then you get this window where you can see, you can type in letters at the top here, and you get a preview of them in a line. So we're going to click on this letter and go metrics, center, and width, and we're going to take the O, center that in width too. And then in this table, what we can do is we can click on the width and using the arrow keys and shift, we can reduce the width symmetrically. And so you can see as I do this that you know the letters are coming in. And we take the O, we can bring that one to Now, um, let me just zoom out a little bit. Now, I want you guys to look at the row of ends very carefully as I do this. Now, let me turn the mouse off. Okay. So, looking at this row of ends, I want you to look at the shapes and tell me if you see them change. If you see the shapes appear to change. Here to get taller. Mm -hmm. That's right. But obviously, we're not changing the shape of the black forms. What we're changing is the rhythm between the black and the white. And so, when there's a lot of white space, then they appear to be wider. And when we bring them in, they appear to get taller. But the black shapes are not changing. It's the white shapes between the letters that's changing. That white shape is becoming like a tall rectangle or a square, or a wide rectangle, as we change the left space in. Do you, does anyone not see this? You're just tired. Okay. So this is really fundamental, right? Because you have to draw the letters in a font editor and space them as you draw them. Because the spacing affects the shape. This is like the big secret. <laughs> okay, so um, the reason we start with the N and the O is that the O is, you know, got to be super symmetrical. And so we just have that intuitive sense, you know, like obviously this is touching, it's too tight. And then, you know, we go like this, and these letters stop hanging together like a word. And so, you know, we're kind of looking for that nice natural rhythm where we think that they're nicely spaced. And then similarly with the N, then you want to bring that in so that it's nicely spaced. You know, we have a sense like this is really too tight. And you know, maybe this is too wide. So yes, maybe, maybe something like this. And so then you, when you've done them on their own, you can do them together. And obviously this is just a kind of crazy design it did in like 10 seconds. So then we need to go back to the design um, and fix that up. So that's how you do the spacing. You get a sense of the, the N and the O's working together. And then you can start to add letters in to this. So let's open up a um, uh, example. Yeah, I 
like this. And then you could add your A in, and then B, C, D. And so you get a sense of if that letter is well spaced in the context of the spacing defined by the N and the O. And also, you know, the, the, um, the D here, you know, the, the a flat edge would start off having the same spacing as the N, a round edge would having the same spacing as the O, and then you would make you know, deviations from that system of spacing. So then the, the fourth window in a font editor is the element font info window. And this is where all the metadata is about the font. So this is where you would set the font's name, the vertical metrics, the open type features, all that stuff. And um, when you set the name, then you can go to file and then generate font. And then that's where you can select the font format that you want. And so as we've said, we're going to do open type CFF, make an OTF. So you make your OTF like this, and put it on your desktop, click generate. And then Font Forge might you know, give you some warnings, um, but generally you know, we're just going to blast through in one day and just accept that. And then on the desktop, you then have that font file that you generated. And then you can click Open with Font Book, you can click Install, and then the font that you've drawn is in your computer. 